What's up YouTube, JP here, and in this video we're going to be installing the homebrew store on my PS4 that's jailbroken on 11.00 and go over a few of my favourite apps. So without further delay, let's dive in. So the first thing we need to do is install the homebrew store. And for your convenience, I've got my PS4 11.00 jailbreak pack in the description. The password is PS4. And I'll also put a direct link to the homebrew store as well if you just want to grab that PKG. Now the way I'm going to install the homebrew store is put that package file on the root of a USB memory stick and then just use Gold Hen package installer to install it. So first of all, let's jump on over to the PC where I'll put that file across and then we'll jump over to the PS4 and get it installed. So here we are on the desktop of the PC and as you can see I've made myself a really cool wallpaper. So we're going to be putting it on the USB memory stick. Now the USB memory stick is formatted to XFAT and then I've just called it Sony in all capital letters. I don't think the Sony part matters but I'll put it on there anyway. Now, as you can see, we've got that pack that I talked about before that is going to be in the link in the description. The password is PS4. So store-r2pkg, that's the actual homebrew store itself. So we're just going to drag and drop it across onto the root of the memory stick. So let's jump on over to the PS4 and connect that USB memory stick. Now, if you go to Gold Hen, then go to Package Installer, store-r2pkg that is what we want to install here and it's going to install really fast now it says it's ready to use but if you're not connected to the internet you will need to go ahead and do that now so just go ahead go to network settings and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to connect to my wi-fi but i'm going to skip ahead because it's got personal details and password etc so now we can go ahead and launch the homebrew store. Now you will have to update it the first time you use it. Not an issue. The update goes really quickly. Now the homebrew store is made by someone called Lightning Mods. And if you do enjoy using the homebrew store, then you can consider donating by chucking in a coffee from coffee.com. The link is here and I'll also put it in the description of this video. So thank you Lightning Mods, I will be donating as soon as I've done this video. So as we can see we're in the store and we've got store apps 162. We're not going to go through them all, in fact we're only going to go through a couple here. So the first program I'm going to install is PS4 Explorer. And this is really handy because you can have access to all the files and folders and structure that's on the PS4 hard drive. So you can create files, delete files, folders, etc. Now later on in the video, we will be installing PKG files over FTP. And this will be really handy because once you've installed them, you can then go ahead and delete them. So the next application we're going to install is Items Flow. And we will take a look at this a little bit later on, but this is definitely a must have if you ask me. It's a really good application. It does lots of different things and the way it lays out all your games, it looks really good. The next thing we're going to install is PS4 Cheats Manager. Now you will get this warning message saying it's not really for your firmware being 11.00 but trust me it does work. I have been using it on various games and cheats and it works absolutely fine. Now the next thing I'm going to install is RetroArch and this is quite a large file. All the cores are one gigabyte and then the actual installation of RetroArch itself. I'm not going to go through this whole install with you. We all know what RetroArch is. We all know what it does. So if you want to play your retro stuff on your PS4, then this is a must have to grab. So let's take a look at items flow. Now, when you first launch this, you're going to get a pop up saying, do you want to download cover art? Now, you will get this message saying, do you want to re-download or check the covers? I just click yes on this and it will download the latest covers from the server. Now, once this is done, you can see this layout. Now, you can launch your games from here. It looks really cool how it sort of organizes everything. 
gives them a nice cover art and it just looks a lot better than the stock PS4 how it sort of shows you what games you've got installed. So if you actually go to one of your games and push the start button you're going to get loads of different options here like dumper path, sort apps, you can rebuild the FPKG database, you can check for updates, there's loads and loads of different options. So next let's have a look at PS4 Cheats Manager. So when you launch it you're going to get this really cool original PlayStation logo. Brings me back. So here we are on the PlayStation 4 Cheats Manager. We've got Update, we've got Cheats, Patches, Online Database and Settings. So if we go to Update, what we want to do is go to Update Cheats, Patches and Plugins over the internet, which is the middle option. Then once we're in here, we can update cheats from the GitHub. So go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and do update patches from GitHub. And we're just going to go through them all one by one. And there we go. That's everything updated. Now to activate the cheats, that's something that we set up in Gold Hen in the previous video. So if you don't know how to do that, go and check that out. But we can go into the cheats option here and we can have a look at all the different cheats they've got. So for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, we can see we've got full infinite ATB, infinite ATB, infinite Gil, infinite HP. And, and these are actually activated in game and I've got mine set up so you just double tap the PlayStation button and it will bring up the menu. So I'm actually going to do a dedicated video on how to use a cheat manager and sort of show you working in game. But while we're on the topic of games, how do you install PKGs on your PS4? I'm going to show you two different ways. The first way is from USB memory stick. So we're going to jump on over to the PC and show you that. And then I'll show you how to do it over FTP. So we're back on the PC and we don't need that homebrew store PKG anymore. So we're going to delete it. So I've gone and got myself a game for the PS4. It's Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. It's the game and it's got a few updates. There is actually a duplicate file here. I don't need that. Don't know what happened then. But what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of this and dump it onto the root of that memory stick. Now this is going to take some time depending on how big the game is. It says 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's just skip ahead to when it's all finished. I've put the memory stick in the PS4 and we're going to go ahead and install this game. So with the memory stick installed, go to Gold Hen, Debug Settings and then Package Installer. Now we do have the option here to install all. And if everything on the memory stick you want to install, then I will suggest doing it this way. Install all packages. OK, now again, this is going to take some time. The DLC files don't take as long, but the actual game itself and if it has a big update can take some time. So let's fast forward to once it's all done. So everything installed OK. And then if we go back to the home screen, we can now see Fallout 4. But what about transferring via FTP? Well, we're going to have to make sure we're connected to our network. So we'll go to set up internet connection again, and we're going to connect to Wi-Fi. I've already got connection to Wi-Fi, so I'm pretty sorted on that one. If you go into Gold Hen, then go to Package Source. As you can see, we've got USB and hard disk drive. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but hard disk drive says data forward slash PKG. So we're going to have to remember that for a little bit later on. So if we go to server settings and I've got FTP server enabled. So I'll just disable it quickly to show you what it does. But when you enable it, it's going to give you the IP address and port number. So now we're going to jump on over to the PC and we're going to connect to it with the FTP client. So back over on the PC, we've got a different game to install now. And we're going to be using FileZilla. I'll put a link in the description for this product and it's relatively easy to use. Now, if you remember for the host, it was 192.168.0.54 
and then the port number was 2121. So we're going to put that information in and hit quick connect. Now the screen at the bottom right, this one here, if you remember, it goes in data, then PKG. So if we go into the data folder, then go into the no, there is no PKG folder. And this might be the same for yours as well. So it's not there by default. So if we right click somewhere at the top, create directory, and then we can see the data forward slash new directory. So let's call it PKG, hit OK. And now we can see we've got that PKG directory. So go into there and this is where we're just going to drag and drop this game across and it's going to start transferring to the PS4. Now again, depending on how big the games are, this can take some time. So let's fast forward ahead till this is successfully transferred. So as you can see, that's just finished copying across and that's on the PS4 hard drive. So let's jump on over to the PS4 and get this installed by going to Gold Hen, Debug Settings and then Package Installer. There we go, we can see the game and the game update and we're going to choose Install All. Install All Packages, OK. Now, of course, it depends on how big the game is, yada yada, how long it's going to take. We're just going to fast forward this part. So as we can see, it's all installed. Now, what do we do with these two files now? Because these package files are still gonna be in the data and that PKG folder. So let's get rid of them. And we're still connected to the PS4 with the FileZilla FTP client. So jumping on over to the PC, we can just right click on these files and hit delete. Now they should be gone from the PS4. So if we go back to the PS4, we'll just go back out of this package installer. There we go, those package files are now gone. And if we go back, we can see that game has successfully installed. So that was just a quick look at the Homebrew Store and a few of my favorite apps. But let me know what your favorite apps are in the comments below or any apps you think I should check out and maybe even do a video on. So I'm going to end the video here. But if you enjoy my content, please do me a favor, like, subscribe and then hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads. I'm JP, you've been watching Alien Gaming and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.